newsletters, are they a thing of the past or are they on vogue still? Because we've got blogging, we've got Facebooking, we've got everything else where we can tweet to our heart's content. But people still need to get to know you. They still need to understand you. They still need to know your language. Is your language the sort of thing that they believe in? Are you talking the same way that they're thinking? This is the big challenge. If you don't write newsletters, do blogging, communicate with other people about your views and opinions on certain matters, how does anybody know whether or not you're the sort of person they want to talk to? It's as simple as that. Yes, there's a lot of noise out there, so you have to make sure that the information you put out there is of quality, is thought-provoking, and is going to leave an impression on the people you're talking to rather than just sending out any old drivel all over the place that people will just delete and ignore the next time it comes through. My newsletters go out irregularly for some and regularly for others. When I send out the written ones, they go out six times a year. Not that often, but it's often enough so that whenever they're received, people are always giving me feedback afterwards, positive feedback as well because I've kept them in the loop. They remember what we're doing. We've got conversations. The dialogue opens up again. So if you are considering newsletters or you're considering stopping doing newsletters, please think again. Focus on the areas where they can have a massive impact. Don't worry about doing too many, but also make sure you're doing enough so that you're not forgotten, which is why combination of video newsletters and written newsletters is the way I work it could be the right way for you as well. As always, if you've got any questions or thoughts you want to throw at me about this subject, please send me an email. I'm happy to have a conversation. Thanks as always for watching.